Hello and welcome to this very special edition of TV30. I'm your host, Geraldine Bisset Joseph. The European Investment Bank have made their first visit to the Caribbean. Leading the high de level delegation, EIB Vice President Ricardo Felix is in the region discussing financial opportunities for Barbados and St. Lucia. And here to give us some further insight into the visit is the Vice President himself, Mr. Richard, sorry, Ricardo Felix. So thank you for joining us here today, Mr. Felix. Thank you very much. It's a great pleasure to be here with you. Okay. Now, in my opening statement, I said that you're actually um, joined by a high, you're actually leading a high-level delegation, rather. Tell us a little bit about the high-level delegation that you're actually going to be here with. Well, it's uh, my first visit uh, as a vice president of the IB to the Caribbean, mm -hmm. and we decided to start by Santa Lucia mm -hmm. uh, because uh, it's very important for us what we have just signed with the government, uh, the health care uh, loan. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm coming here with uh, the... Uh, with uh, the head of division for Latin America and the Caribbean, mm -hmm. with the loan officers uh, involved, and uh, with a team that uh, is the team that uh, is dealing with uh, the financial opportunities and uh, with the uh, uh, operations with uh, Latin America, the Caribbean, and in particular in this case with the Caribbean region, with Santa Lucia, Barbados, and uh, other Caribbean islands. So we are mm -hmm. prepared to uh, discuss, and that's what we did with uh, Prime Minister Philippe Chipier. Okay. Uh, about future opportunities. Okay. Now, you, you discussed the, about the loan um, in regards to the healthcare sector in St. Lucia. Can you give us a little bit more insight into that? Well, it's an important loan. It's uh, 14, 14 million mm -hmm. uh, euros uh, mm -hmm. for uh, support, uh, supporting Santa Lucia healthcare system in dealing uh, with uh, the COVID pandemic, okay. which affected pretty much uh, all, the, all the world economies, but in particular, a uh, small economy like Santa Lucia mm -hmm. that uh, relies on uh, tourism and on services. Right. And this sector was pretty much affected by the COVID pandemic. Mm -hmm. So uh, this 14 uh, million uh, loan is devoted to improve the healthcare system, mm -hmm. to prepare the healthcare system to deal with the COVID, that uh, unfortunately is not yet behind us, mm -hmm. uh, but also with the future health care challenges that will come. Mm -hmm. And uh, European values of uh, freedom, democracy and solidarity right. uh, need to be materialized. And uh, this is a materialization of these uh, values uh, in this case with Santa Lucia, because uh, democracy and freedom implies that uh, uh, people have their basic health insured mm -hmm. by a universal system mm -hmm. that allows people to work and to have their lives. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, this is a big leap forward, a big step forward in terms of improving people's lives, but also in terms of improving the productivity of this economy. Right. Yeah. Okay. Now, so one, some of the um, literature I was actually given about the, the sorry, European um, investment bank, it actually stated how um, promoting sustainable development is actually in the Caribbean is something that you guys really take to heart. Tell us a little bit about that. The European uh, Investment Bank mm -hmm. uh, has become the, Euro the EU Climate Bank. Right. Uh, so years ago, we started long ago, in fact. Mm -hmm. We started back in 2008 with the okay. green bonds, okay. uh, which were the first uh, financial asset for which proceeds are fully devoted to, uh, in fact, uh, uh, fight uh, climate uh, change. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, since 2019, with the Climate Bank Roadmap, mm -hmm. we put a lot of effort on mitigation, meaning uh, replacing fossil fuels by renewable energy sources, investing in energy efficiency, mm -hmm. investing in R&D, new forms of uh, energy and energy conservation on the mm -hmm. one hand. Mm -hmm. But uh, the climate change is there, mm -hmm. and the impacts are there right. on the Caribbean islands is suffering this yes. pretty much yeah. without being an uh, issuer of greenhouse gases. Mm -hmm. So the other part is adaptation, which means adapting our infrastructures to climate uh, change impacts that mm -hmm. are already materializing. Mm -hmm. We need to do both. We need to avoid uh, that uh, climate change moves fast and uh, uh, creates and destroys, in fact, our livelihoods. But mm -hmm. at the same time, we need to deal with the existing impacts and these existing impacts are materializing in this region of the globe uh, to a large extent and we are okay. more than happy to continue working with uh, Santa Lucia and with the Caribbean to make resilient infrastructures prepared to deal with these extreme weather events that are coming 
more frequently. Right. Oh, that's a, that's a, a great thing, a great initiative, because, I mean, as you said, the, the whole thing about SID, small island development states, and this is yep. something that, that's very dear to our hearts, yeah, because we know that the effect that is happening here, that's happening here. So is that one of the reasons, for example, um, why EIB Global was actually developed as well, so that you could reach out to these smaller islands and such likes? EIB Global uh, was uh, created, in mm -hmm. fact, to organize our activities uh, towards outside you in a more efficient manner. Okay. Uh, more uh, devoting the resources, devoting the people that is experienced and doing more uh, outside you, mm -hmm. such that we get closer to, mm -hmm. the, uh, to the outside you mm -hmm. populations, to the small islands, developing states. Mm -hmm. uh, this is very important to have mm -hmm. teams fully dedicated to you that understand what are the needs what are the institutional framework, mm -hmm. what, is the, uh, I what are these economies based on, mm -hmm. such that you can deliver faster and more efficiently. That's why we created EIB Global, to right. have a, a branch fully devoted to uh, the issues, the problems, and the needs of uh, uh, the populations outside you, in particular Caribbean. Okay, all right. Now, I know that the, the, the visit is supposed to be how many days? Four days, I believe? Four days. Right. So. What are you expected to get done? What are you hoping to get done within those four days? Well, in these four days, I'll be contacting, uh, well, I contacted, uh, uh, today I met uh, Philippe Chepierre, right. uh, the Prime Minister. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, moving to Barbados. In Barbados, uh, we'll have uh, contacts with uh, also uh, the government of Barbados, but mm -hmm. to have the EU CARICOM Forum, mm -hmm. which will be a great opportunity to meet uh, uh, many of the uh, leaders and of members of government of the Caribbean yeah. islands, mm -hmm. so that we can put forward and convey our message mm -hmm. and uh, our two new regional uh, programs, one devoted to clean water and uh, clean oceans mm -hmm. and the other one devoted to the green and inclusive recovery. They target okay. different types of uh, issues, yeah. one devoted to manage the water supply systems, the storm water drainage systems such right. that we can keep the pollution before it comes into the ocean and mm -hmm. keep the oceans clean. Mm -hmm. So that's one uh, program. Mm -hmm. The other one is related precisely with uh, doing the green transition in an inclusive manner, mm -hmm. leaving no one behind and uh, mm -hmm. putting uh, the people, the citizens first. Okay, brilliant. Uh, can we expect you in that case to be coming back to the, the Caribbean again soon? I'll be more than happy to come <laughs> very soon to sign more uh, deals with, uh, with the Caribbean governments, uh, okay. Santa Lucia and with, the other, uh, with others. And uh, I think there's a lot we can do in the region mm -hmm. and uh, we are more than happy to work. So I'll be more than happy to back soon okay. to keep uh, moving and signing uh, more loans and uh, more commitments to support the okay. development of the Caribbean. Okay, well, this is really, honestly it's been a great thing. I know you don't have much time, but is there anything you'd like to add? Because uh, to me, that this is a great opportunity for you to actually say some stuff to the people out there that's actually the audience of NTN. Because before um, you actually came, I didn't even really know that much about the European Investment Bank and, and such like. So what can you tell us that so we know a little bit more about you? Well, uh, the European Investment Bank is the biggest uh, multilateral development bank. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, we do uh, close to 60, 65 billion euros per mm -hmm. year of funding. 90% mm -hmm. uh, of this in the European Union, but 10% outside EU. So this means that uh, we are doing something like seven, eight, nine, and we want to grow uh, our, uh, our um, funding outside EU to a level that can be in the region of uh, 9 to 10 billion euros per year. Right. It's a quite a substantial amount of money. Yeah. And uh, uh, what I'd like to convey to the Caribbean uh, authorities is that uh, part of this can be used in the benefit of your populations, benefiting from lower interest rate costs, mm -hmm. benefiting from uh, longer tenors, longer maturities of the loans, such mm -hmm. that it doesn't put so much pressure in your public finances, mm -hmm. but also technical assistance, which right. means that uh, we want also to use the grants from the European Union, and we work side by side with the European Commission to get the best projects, projects that uh, follow the best uh, practices, right. and that are good enough so that improve people's lives the most mm -hmm. we can. Okay. Our aim is impact, yeah. impacting people's lives yeah. in the positive direction. Well, Mr. Felix, thank you so much for joining us today. That was absolutely fantastic. It was a pleasure having you here today. My pleasure. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you very much. And thank you for joining us here at this TV30 special. However, right now, it's time for me to say bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>